Hello everyone, my name is Prashant and the topic for the today's video is AWS Lambda Layers. So before I start discussing about Lambda Layers, let me give you a brief introduction about what Lambda is and then I will jump into what exactly the use of the Lambda Layers. So without wasting any time, let's try to understand what Lambda is. So AWS Lambda, sometimes you heard the word called FAS which is functional service or serverless. Okay. So let's try to understand this in a simple language. So let's say I'm a startup or any enterprise based co enterprise company and uh, means my developers, they are writing a code and at the end of the day, that code need to be deployed on some server, whether it is running on uh, Linux or Windows based that need to be deployed. Now, if that code need to be deployed on the servers, I need to manage those servers, either your DevOps team or your infrastructure team or system admin, they need to manage those servers. With manage those servers, I mean, they need to patch it. In case if the load goes up, they either need to uh, increase the number of servers behind your load balancer, or they might even need to do a vertical scaling, like for example, need to add more RAM or CPU and all those information, all those things. So, it is a, I mean, if all those heavy lifting tasks can, I mean, isn't it as good if all those heavy lifting tasks can be taken care by AWS? And that is where Lambda shines. So in a case of a Lambda, it's AWS who is going to take care of all these things. So the patching of those servers, if the, if the number of requests uh, is higher, then Lambda AWS on the back end will take care of auto scaling those servers. Okay. So then the main function in your organization is to, uh, for your developers to write the code and they don't need to worry about like where exactly the code is running, uh, because it is automatically being taken care by AWS. So it is serverless because you don't need to manage those servers. It's AWS who is taking, going to take care of those servers. So with now you have little bit out idea about Lambda. Now let's try to understand Lambda layers. So let me try to explain to you with the help of one practical example. But before that, let me just give you a one liner of like what Lambda layer is and what Lambda layer will do. It will let you share your code. Okay. So let's try to understand that. And in order to understand that, let's go to the AWS console. Uh, search for Lambda. Okay. Click on dashboard. Create function. Okay. I am going to say my demo func. Okay. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to use Python 3.8 and I will say create function. Okay. Okay. This is going to create some boilerplate syntax for me. And it, rather than using JSON, I'm using request module. And using this request, I'm just going to verify if my website is up or not. Okay. So let me write that code. So with the, this request, I'm going to writing one variable called response. Okay. In which using requests dot get, I'm verifying if my website 101 days of devops.com is up or run, is up or not so if response is true which means its exit code is i mean the response code or the apache code is coming as 200 then i will say my website is up and running Okay, else I will say website is down. Okay, now in case of a Lambda, if you need to uh, execute this code, you first need to deploy it. So I can say deploy and then I, I will test it. Okay, I will say hello world. You need to give your event some name. Let's say test. I don't need to pass any values, key or value. So let's keep it blank. 
and create and now test it okay so here you are seeing the message unable to import module lambda function no module name request okay and the reason you are getting this error because under the hood the vm or the docker container whatever it is behind the scene which aws finished it for us to execute this lambda function that does not have the request module installed okay so now the next question is how do we able to find it out what are the modules or what are the attributes or method which is available or what are okay let me put it this way uh, how we can verify that what are the modules which is pre-installed comes with the uh, docker container or the vm which aws is going to spin it for us so for that let's write one more lambda function or let's do one thing let's copy this code somewhere let me copy this code here okay and what i will do i am going to import something called pkg underscore resource okay pkg underscore resources okay then the again the lambda boilerplate syntax lambda underscore handler and uh, okay okay then uh, let me do one thing print dir okay and i will say pkg underscore resource so using this i am just trying to find it out what are the attributes and method which is supported by this module okay let's test it no. okay sorry i need to deploy it first okay then test it so you can see it support a bunch of uh, attributes and method so if i copy paste here the output of this you can see the amount of methods and attributes supported by this module okay so out of this i am looking for something called working set whenever you have time just go through it and you will see so what i will do i will do this this okay let me deploy it again and test it and you will see that you are getting this package resource working set object which means for pkg in i can iterate over it print pkg okay print package let's try to print those packages error message name p is not defined where do i put p so for package in this 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 okay let's do one thing let's do one thing let's try to save this output pkgs is equal to this right and then iterate over it okay let's save the output like this for pkg in pkgs and print pkg sorry we got the object so let's iterate over it like this okay so you will see that these are the modules which comes by default with your uh, whatever the like the docker container or the vm which is running behind the scene okay and as you can see in this list if i make it a little bit big i am not seeing the request module so what exactly i need to do i need to bundle up so if you look at the way you can do it in the case of a lambda either you can write the code in this code editor or you can upload a zip file and in that zip file you can upload the dependencies also so for example for this for the code we have we have the dependency of request that i can bundle it up and deploy it here in the in the zip file zip it up that file and upload it here 
or I can give the S3 location. So for the timing, let's focus on this zip file where we can put our dependency and upload it along with the zip file. Now the problem if, is if I'm going to write 10 more codes. Okay. So let's say I have a requirement where I am writing like say 10 more lambda function, lambda function and all those lambda function require request module. So what exactly I need to do? I need to upload that uh, zip file along with um, which contain the my dependency which is request and all the dependencies which request required 10 times right and this is where this lambda layers comes really handy now as this is done we need to follow some series of steps okay so in all, first step is we need to create a zip file and to create a zip file, what we are going to do? We are first going to create a virtual environment. Virtual environment. And that we are going to do it with the help of something called pip env utility. And in that virtual environment, we are going to create our, uh, we are going to install a request module. We are going to create a zip file out of it. And then we will upload it into our Lambda function. Lambda function. Okay. So let's get started. So for that, let me do one thing where I am. Okay. Let me get a directory called my new request. Okay. Let me go to it. My new request just to make things clean. Okay. So first thing you, what you need to do is you need to install that pip env module. And I, I want to make sure that a normal user can uh, can create uh, this module. So that's why I'm using the hyphen hyphen user plan. So I should have this as installed. Okay. I think I already have some pip env running. So let me do one thing. Let me remove that pip env hyphen hyphen rm. Okay, removing that. Let me create a new version environment using the existing version of Python. So paste and this is going to create a new version environment. Okay. And let me get a shell access to that pip env shell. Okay. So this has been activated. So I think this throws me out of the that environment, but let me go to that directory. And now we are going to install the request module. And that we are going to do with the help of pip env install request. Okay, this is done. Now we need to create a directory. And this is the directory structure which is going to hold all these packages. So what do I mean by that? So like I mentioned, we need to create a directory and this directory is used to define the structure of our package mkdir pi hyphen dir oh sorry because none of these exist so i need to use hyphen p flag okay so let's go to the aws documentation okay and there it is mentioned that you need to create this directory that we have created and the reason for that because when we are going to upload this zip file it is going to be extracted inside the Lambda uh, runtime uh, where, I mean, the place where this Lambda is, is running, which may be a Docker container or it might be a virtual machine inside the slash opt directory. And inside the slash opt directory, it is expecting this directory. And this is a directory, which is a standard directory in case of Python, where it holds all the modules and its dependency. Okay, so let me show you this. Let me do one thing. Let me lock out the packages or the modules that we have installed. So in requirement.txt and cat requirement.txt. So as you can see, I have the request and all its dependency. And then in the next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to install these packages in that directory, in the temporary directory that we have created.
okay so now what it did if you go inside this build python lib you will see all the packages and its dependency which has been installed okay so now let me go inside the build directory okay and from there i'm going to create a zip so what i am doing i goes inside this build directory and recursively i'm creating this zip file and i'm mentioning dot which means it's going to include everything okay so now i have this uh i think it is one level up yes we have this request layer dot zip okay so now go back to the aws console go back to your lambda function this lambda function or you can go here to the layers click on create layers uh, i will say my new demo layer okay description is optional upload a zip file where i'm going to install this zip file so i think it is created inside document my new request so my new request request dot layer runtime is environment is optional but i'm going to put python 3.8 okay this is created now go back to your lambda function lambda my demo func okay click on layer i think i've already added one layer but let me remove this so this guy remove it save it okay click on the layer again click on add a layer custom layer and this time i am choosing my new demo layer and it's going to be version 1 okay now let's try to execute your function again okay and this time you see that it does not throw that error that the request module is not found okay and it is saying my website is up and running let me try some website which does not exist let's say i will add a deploy test it again and as obviously it says that this website does not exist or all the exception it is true so this is one of the really neat functionality which is provided by aws lambda so which is called layer and now because we have created this layer we can use this layer or this request module in any of our functions so if i'm going to write n more functions lambda functions here i can use this layer so every time i don't need to upload that module request module and its dependency i just need to upload i just upload it once and i can reuse my code so this is the importance of this is the advantage of using lambda layer you can share your code okay and you can upload the layer once and then you can reference reference it in your function okay and just remember one things you can only have five layers and each layer extracted in i mean as i mentioned is in the slash opt directory so you can maximum have five layer each layer extracted in slash opt directory or in case of your linux based operating system and you have a limit of 75 gb per region okay so there is a per region limit which is enforced on that on this layer okay so this is little bit about aws lambda layer i hope you find this video useful in case if you have any question please mention in the comment section i will try my best to answer those question uh, thanks again for watching this video bye